vibration. That was good. <laughs> Can't wait for there to be fans here tomorrow to feel some of that vibration, of course. Um, but this game three is hopefully not a shellacking because we've seen a lot of this in the group stage. We see a shellacking game one, shellacking game two between the other team winning. And usually game three, that means it's going to be a lot more yeah. hotly contested. It's very rare that it's a, sh it, that it's a shellacking trifecta. There's trifecta. Usually, there's usually not enough Gaben's nectar to go around. There's a, <laughs> scarce, a very scarce resource, much like Gaben's milk. <laughs> All right. That's a good start to game number three with one of the hypest matchups that we have seen thus far in the upper bracket. So whoever loses will still have another life in that lower. And... Yeah, this is going to be very, very nice. But the Morphling pick kind of dumbfounding the, the panel to a degree. It's not a hero that we've seen in quite a while. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts on this uh, this model, first and foremost? Okay, don't. <laughs> All right, now, now that we're past now the opinions we're of the now. model, what about the hero itself in this game? Um, it's not bad. It's good against Razor, and to be honest, it's not good versus much more than that. I think Pango is one of the better mid heroes against Morph because you have this mana burn, you have this disarm, um, you have this constant chain stunning. Morph doesn't like to buy BKB that much. Um, and Alchemist versus Morphling is like sort of a two sided matchup, but generally Alchemist can hit a timing that Morphling is not too happy against. Uh, Avalanche from Jin Q to secure the bounty rune in the top river. I feel like with Morph, no more uh, bands, does he, he does not have jump. He has yeah, dispose. Dead. Poison Touch is reapplying over and over and over. So this he looks missed. to be first blood. One more right click. He's going to pop the Fairy Fire in the trees. He gets to dispose off. And why not wanting to take first blood for himself? Obviously, Ame would be the better choice, but we don't, we don't have a choice this time around. Either way, PSG LGD with first blood. Still relatively happy with that. Oh, they're swapping lands. Oh. Oh. I did not expect this. I really thought that they wanted the Morph lane to be against Razor in lane. Uh, just because you can waveform away from the link. But honestly, like, Razors just go for Plasma Field. This seems like a better matchup. We've seen Viper dumpster Razor before. Yeah, I think this is a lot better. I think the lanes in the other way actually would have gone really bad for OG. So I think this is a much better setup because I think the... The what you call it? This stupid freaking Viper Marcy. I don't think would have. I'm not. Yeah, I don't know. I think this, this is considerably better setup for OG. And already Faith Beyond having to resort to try to plasma fielding down creeps because can't really get that close to the wave. Obviously, Seb playing the Earthshaker this time around. One of the two heroes that he's been spamming a lot in this tournament. Obviously, changed that up a bit in this series, which is nice to see. Actually, I've yet to see the winner enter this series at all. Um, but BZM playing the mid coddle. As Seb actually blocked in by his own fissure, the avalanche keeps him in place as well. Big static link from Faith Beyond. Seb trying to limp away as Amar, right clicking Faith Beyond to a height. I mean, he might be able to get this kill if he just stands his ground. Indeed, he does. Now, Jin Q kind of stuck between a Viper and a Rock. And it looks like he is dead as well. So, two kills for OG in the laning stage. Can't ask for a better start. Yeah, they will meet. Oh, in a sense, ends up dropping to Yuragi. So that's a little bit of a surprising match. I mean, this is a Morphling and Marcy lane like you talked about as Ame getting harassed out. He gets disposed back in the wave as well. Puts down his acid spray, but he drops in addition. And Yoragi just strength gaining back up to a, a respectable amount of HP. And OG, other than the first blood, it's been all of them to start this game. No. Yeah, I mean, this is a game where the early tempo matters a lot. This Coddle hero, when he is uncontested and has side lanes that are going okay, he gets this bots and suddenly he starts porting around and things can get really out of control. Suddenly you start chain feeding, this guy gets Vessel, and the game can really slide out of your favor. So, like, how things happen early, how runes are contested, uh, how this Pangos game is, and that the side lanes aren't too out of control is, like, a very big deal this game, since the mids will likely look to rotate. Yeah, in terms of the mids, it feels like this matchup between Pango and Caudal is just a farming. <laughs> I, I don't see either of them getting a kill on each other without some sort of a gank. Yeah, it's pretty hard without ganks to kill this Caudal hero. It's just 7,000 movement speed. Um, nothing to say is doing pretty well so far. Um, BZM backing up to stack some camps, so sacrificing a couple lane creeps to get the stacks in. Um, if LGD is aware of this, fighting these can be very, very good, because giving the Caudal the free stacks is rather spooky sometimes. Uh, nothing to say, actually stealing some of those stacks. Uh, easy camp stack, he got about half of it. TP's back to the tower. And why? He's gonna get disposed. And a big shadow wave comes out, but it'll give me the death of him. It might be the trade, though. So LGD's able to get something out of this lane, I guess, but still. 
OG very favorable overall as Faith Beyond. Amar gets tossed back into the fray. He might just right click again to find this kill. And he's going to get it a little bit later as Seb finds the kill on Faith Beyond. But Amar not getting the XP, kind of a big deal. Yeah, this top lane is very finicky and very high skill. It can swing either way pretty hard depending on what happens. And like, because they both have no TPs now, right? So when they pour it in, this next minute oh, can be oh, very, oh. very impactful for either side. More pressure in the bot lane. We're going to have the dispose with Marcy's sidekick on Yuragi. That's something, I mean, I haven't gotten to see this this patch because Morphling is so underpicked, but going to low Agi and then just getting free lifesteal without having, I mean, he already has the Mask of Mana. With a more, more with a Morbid Mask, mask well, on top yeah. of it. Yeah, he doesn't need any more regen. That's, uh, that's a pretty nice combo. That is very nifty. I think as long as LGD is oh, able to oh, sort of stabilize oh, oh, in this top lane, get levels, not like chain feed to this Viper, there will come a point where Pango might rotate up here, maybe the Dazzle comes, and this Viper is potentially free food to the tossbacks and things like this. He doesn't typically fare very well against it. More pressure on Y. Looks like he'll live though as Concoction comes out. Tiger will be the recipient of that. Uh, this time, obviously game one, we saw the position five Alchemist not work out super well. This time it was the last pick position one Alchemist for Ame. Uh, your thoughts on either of you out for this specific game? I feel like it's a good game for just because like the panel was mentioning, there's not much to contest the Alk uh, as top lane. I'm sad, might be dead. Toss finishes him off, Faith Beyond. Can take some. Poison attack stacks from Amar with that nether toxin in addition. Already at half HP, gets off the plasma field, has TP now, but might be just resigned to his own death. So Amar, another kill goes the way of OG in this lane. Level five, that is starting to be a problem. The level five is a pretty big point in terms of damage. And Dazzle is kind of tied to this bottom lane as of now until Alchemist gets a little bit closer to six, so they kind of just have to hold on top for now. And you can see they weren't able to contest the top stacks because these side lanes are so laning intensive right now that Kato got the farm lane. So you see Asias way jacked up and uh, looking to be in a pretty good spot. Yeah, that is quite the lead. I mean, obviously some of those are jungle creeps, but still, uh, that mid lane. You're gonna see nothing to say with his rolling thunder. The, the wall is gonna be pretty annoying, but he's trying to use it to his advantage to take out Seb at the very least. And Faith Beyond with the static link should be able to ensure that one. As Amar looks to be fine, as Jin Q ticking away, but he lives on just 20 HP. Pretty good situation for OG right now. This Coddle is getting continued to farm. Nothing to say rotates up here, but it's just one support kill. It doesn't really change anything. Viper's still going to be chilling. Maybe Shaker brings him some regen. Um, they're not getting kicked out of bottom lane at any point. Alchemist is, is still doing okay, but this Coddle has had this free game. The bots are coming up, probably has he's, very he's, soon. He's got them already. Yeah, the TPs are going to start coming out pretty yeah, there soon. Is. And it'll be a Rebound disposed back into the creep wave as BZM is here with a big Illuminate, but a nice grave comes out from Y. Do they have enough to finish off Ame? You can see BZM just so speedy. Naragi not able to find the distance, but another Illuminate just clips Ame. And that is a big kill for OG, as now they can potentially just finish out this lane with Y. And that second kill. Yeah, that is very rough. The Dazzle also TP down bottom, so now they have sort of have this impasse top where Viper's sitting there and they don't have the resources to bring there. As long as they keep an eye on what this Pango is doing and they don't feed in some silly way, the Coddle is going to start to make the map really bad for LGD, I think. And he's going for that Vessel too, so uh, that is one way to contest the Alchemist in the jungle. I, I feel like OG's heroes, if, if they weren't so far ahead, they'd be a a little bad at contesting Alk, but they're they're huge. Well, we have another Fissure coming out. Nothing to say. Has to use the Shield Crash to get to the other side. But a nice toss brings Amar back into the arms of PSG LGD, which is going to be their biggest pickup so far in this game, it feels like. Uh, but the Fissure, it's not something we talk about that often against Panga, but it, it actually it can be very impactful uh, to have to try to I mean, you have Shield Crash to get over it. But it's, it's very a, annoying. It's an either way, though, right? Because, it could work the other because way you can well. bounce off of it. It's just a free wall. Yeah. BZM rotated. So you can see the value of these boosted travel already contributing to two, actually three kills on this top and bottom lane, respectively. Yeah, I think that was his urn charge as well. So now even more damage. That uh, W slow combined with the urn is a lot of damage. Once you get to the vessel, it's like just crazy. And I don't know if, like, I mean, you can see even there, nothing to say with a really nice TP of, like, a really quick kill on Viper, but it doesn't come to anything. Like, it's a kill, but it doesn't feel like it's it's trampling the map. It doesn't feel like things are collapsing. And 
bottom lane is still there. This casual pressure. Alchemist isn't having this free time. Like the Morphling is dying, creeps being annoying. You can see a CS starting to fall behind. Yeah. And the Coddle pressure is not going to let up. He's going to have Vessel before too long. And I don't know if they're going to have a way to actually kill this hero. Yeah, they don't exactly have great backline jump. The catching with the Panga roll is pretty damn hard, especially without a Blink Dagger. Uh, which he is not close to. Piney Toss, it's like, these are not really a, like assassinate spells. They're more like initiations, you know, so... It took some high skill. Yeah, there's a gank attempt onto Ame. He's outnumbered. He gets off the Chemical Rage, but the burst damage is way too much. And they lose Seb on the other side of the map, but again, favorable trade for OG is this Alchemist. He is not off to a great start, just middle of the pack at the nine minute mark when, I mean, in a couple minutes, that is typically the time where you're deep into your Radiance. And they lane the Morphling against him. It's like they didn't even lane this crazy Viper lane dominating hero into the Alk. Uh, this is a free farm Yuragi Morphling that also happened to dumpster and pressure the lane. This is like disaster situation for LGD. Yeah, I mean, this is very reminiscent of the first game where this Bloodseeker is just slowly kicking Ame out. He's poor, and there's like this impending pressure. I think OG is really good at playing this type of situation. If you're this Coddle, um, you're really free. You feel like you have these melee heroes that can just run in for you. There's Morphling that can't die. There's so many, you have so many heroes that can just give you vision. You just play off that, and Tiny's not going to blink for 100 years. Neither will Pango. Like, it's a really free game to abuse this vessel. And Amar in the trees, as we hear Chemical Rage, is Ame trying to catch up as much as he can uh, with the they, help of his team being around. They do know Amar is here because the courier came into the trees. They saw with the ward. Yeah, that's mid lane. Looks like Jin Q going to get disposed under his own tier one, and BZM is just all over the place. How many kills is that for him now? 3 0 and 2. And he almost involved in five kills so far. 100 gold, he's got the vessel. Yeah, that's a, that's a problem. And they just smoke up immediately, and why it might be the recipient of this smoke gank. He's gonna get blinding lit to the other side of the fissure, maybe not exactly uh -oh. what they're looking for. It's Ame. Okay, beautiful rolling thunder from nothing to say. BZM just dead. That's worth a lot of money. But Faith the Oncoming is getting bursted down by Yuragi. Is set with the Echo Slam coming out. But it's not enough for him to get away as Yuragi still with that sidekick. Turns it to Razor. Gets off that flat in the field as well as the focus is on Titan. He gets a big rebound out to safety. Yuragi trying to save his teammate. Double kill for nothing to say. And now it's a 1v3 for Yuragi. Not sure if he can find anybody after the fact. That was really impressive from LGD. The way they're positioned on the left, they know that OG is coming from the right. So they're like sort of leaning and they're hiding in the trees and they bait this Dazzle out a bit. I think OG actually steps a bit too far up and they overcommit to this level five Dazzle kill, which doesn't matter that much. And they open the opportunity for this Pango to come through with the roll. Because realistically, if you're playing more in the open and you're kiting a bit better, you can avoid giving away these kills. But LGD is like super ready there and poised because they know the map's kind of in a bad state and they need this like clutch play and they get it perfectly, which is like a huge deal because the map was starting to get into a very bad spot. OG also took a risk with that fight too because Amar TP'd out of top lane as they popped the smoke to go top. So they, they knew that that was at best going to be, a, a, I guess at worst, a, a 4v5. Uh, they thought they could win that without Amar and Yuragi getting, or BZM getting caught out. It's like, that, that's the worst hero to die first, uh, like you mentioned with the bait on the Dazzle. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you make a read in the moment and you're like, okay, this is a good fight for us. You're just playing in the moment. You're playing, you know, fast Dota, but Sometimes that can backfire and the enemy's ready and maybe you get a little overzealous and you feed some kills away. They were also like 100 gold away from Vessel at the time. It was just the urn, so yeah. a pretty big momentum swing in the way of LGD. And it gives Ame a little bit of space as we're going to see the <laughs> little swap <laughs> over there. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'll take that room. No oh, problem. Pretty good. Taiga just used to clicking that Q button immediately yeah. upon seeing somebody. <laughs> Uh, slightly wrong angle as Amar has the double Wraith ban going for the Dragon Lance and then into the BKB. Yep, he's finished with the D Lance, so he's uh, pretty damn strong. Right rebound now. onto Jin Q, so gonna get some retribution for taking that bounty rune. The insolence from Jin Q. Set is standing here. Thought they might go on him, but not to be. Yeah, and how close is he getting to his next? Next item. So he's already a thousand into his blink there. We, I actually have to get your opinion on this, Quinn, because me and Jenkins have talked a lot about it. This Earthshaker here has looked really, really bad at times and really, really good. And it seems to come down to how early can he get this blink. Uh, he's actually queued up the shard. <laughs> Okay, very good. Let's change the set Yeah, I mean, I think the, the blink is very important, and also how you can use this uh, fissure. Oh, looks like he's gonna die. Looks Where like he is dead. Go. Or is he? Getting static length, another fissure comes oh. out. Just need one more plasma field if you can kneel, but he's actually blocked up by the trees, so Seb. 
limping away. Maybe this little extra life here will make him change his mind and not go for the shard first. Although we have seen that from time to time, and it's pretty damn valuable. Yeah, it's, it's not like a one and done type thing. You can just get this off repeatedly. Yeah, I mean, it's also a very good shard game because you have a lot of poke damage. You have this long range Viper damage. You have long range Cobble damage. So if you're the sort of waddling around Shaker, you walk in, you fissure, bam. Like you have a lot of this chain stun poke damage. I'm sure they have the Grave, but is a Grave really going to save the guy? Probably not. He's still really slow. He's still stunned. He's probably still going to die. So the Grave isn't really that much of a save early on in the game. Looks like BZM working on an Orchid as his next item, as a Fusal Blade finish now into nothing to say's Pango. So Orchid against Pango, obviously something you don't really want to itemize against. Uh, we've seen Lotus Orb in the past. Uh, what, what are the, the choices, or what are the reasoning for the Orchid other than the Pango? I think a lot of it is just the Pango, but it's also pretty annoying for the supports. If you find some tiny now, he can he can no longer like avalanche to reset. Um, you have like planetary orchid range with this uh, when you pop cuddle ult. So <laughs> yeah, That's a nice term. I when, like that. when you see this dazzle, it's just like you over there. Yeah, you're orchided. Oh, Amar. He's gonna get some speed boost thanks to the rebound, but he's not gonna outchase. Nothing to say with that defusal blade. The inhibit comes out, and he's gonna get stun locked on the stairway. And nothing to say gets credit for this one. BZM cancels his TP too. There's uh, there's no way to save him there when the Marcy TPs out. I, th I I like the Orchid against Dazzle. I feel like the big way people try to answer the Dazzle is by jumping and killing Dazzle. But if you have planetary range, <laughs> why not just? Wait, is that what you, you said? Yeah, planetary I did say range? planetary. Why not just Orchid him? Like just we we can focus the frontliner. We can focus whoever we want because the Dazzle's not going to be able to press any spells. What item is Dazzle going to get to take off an Orchid? There's n there's yeah, not. It's, it's not happening. Not for a long time. I mean, I mean, eventually they'll get a Lotus Orb. It's an extremely good Lotus Orb per game for LGD, but that's still quite a ways away. Well, Ame catching up. He's very close to finishing his Radiance. And yeah, second net worth now. Uh, we've seen like the 14, 15 minute Radiance, and the fact that he gets it around this time is actually pretty damn impressive considering how shut down he was to start the game. Speaking of getting shut down, Dazzle's dead. Yes, he is. Yeah, anyway, back to what you were saying. Uh, Radiance. Not bad timing, considering the start. Yep, it's uh, that that fighter on top really bought them a lot of space to be able to like just sort of chill on their side of the map and continue to get the items up. Um, Kalo's momentum has slowed down quite a bit, and this is a hero that relies a lot on that. There is a window sort of in this 15 to 25 minute phase where the items you buy, they're nice if you're owning, like they're really helpful, but if the game is sort of even, the enemy starts getting closer to BKBs and Lotus Orbs and Blinks, and then your game can be a bit more scary to play. So we're sort of starting to get into that range, and if OG doesn't get more tempo, there will come a point where LGD has multiple Blinks and they have BKBs, and things can be harder for this Coddle to like actually maneuver and play. Yeah, we are pressure to the tier one as the fort is now popped from LGD. You can see Jin Q has his blink, so you get these avatosses back into enemy lines. But the tier one tower is just going to be given up. LGD not ready to defend this. Yeah, Razor's close to BKB, and he's not fighting into Coddle, Viper, Marcy, Shaker no way. before BKB. Yeah, that's... So, he's AFK farming. Oh, into the pit. So, OG, finding a little opening here, and you can see LGD not really in the area. Which is, how fast can they take this? Approaching the half HP mark, and... Yeah, it looks to be a freebie for OG. Yeah, it does seem so. I don't think this Aegis is going to do that much, realistically. Uh, this Morphling probably wasn't going to be dying very much anyway, so an Aegis is like nice and all, but this is definitely not the end of the world, and LGD is just playing for their timings because contesting that is just very, very risky. Yeah. And we see Shard now online for Seb, who's actually going for a four step instead of the blink next. The Fissure actually blocking up most of his team, but the rebound back in. Early grave, saving nothing to say for the time being, but the Echo Slam keeps two in place, and that means two are dead in favor of OG. And they're gonna find yet another as Yuragi turns into Tiny, another toss to work with. Double kill for BZM as OG with this Aegis advantage, winning this fight handily. Yeah, nothing to say with a little bit of a whoopsie there, I think. He swashed a little bit aggressively, and once you swash forward like that against this Orchid, uh, it's a problem. Yep, Taiga, he might be the collateral. Faith Beyond forced to pop his BKB, trying to man fight against Yuragi, but again, this is just the Aegis, and now Faith Beyond, basically in enemy lines, despite this being his own triangle, trying to get BZM, but it's not gonna happen. So the domino effect continues as LGD fall, fall, fall. Yeah, so I have an uncharacteristic mistake from Faith Beyond. That's, this chain feeding thing is not a thing that 
often happens for LGD, so a little bit messy, but OG playing, pushing the tempo very hard. They get this Aegis, and they don't, like, back up to push lanes. They immediately straight into the triangle. Yeah, they, they go man again. Up. They're smoking. Yeah. They, they know they have some really strong footing right now. Alchem is still off his BKB. Razor's BKB CD. Pango no blink yet. Like, they have a lot of things going their way. And they smoke. The, they might actually catch All Might down here. This was a good read. I don't know if they saw him walking out of base with the ward. Oh boy, and he's all alone. He's just a recipe away from BKB. If he shows the acid spray, maybe they'll redirect. He's not ready for it. Of course, they already used their scan, so just the fact that he's in these trees okay, he, is pretty he, difficult to find. Yeah, he sees the creep wave being pushed by the caudal now. He knows all of OG is here. There's also a gigantic wave top, believe me, Kyle. He'd be very happy about that, that. yeah. So, not too far away from the BKB, but the fact that you're playing Alchemist down 4k, uh, not not a great sign to start from LGD. And Yuragi, we've seen, he's had this Manta for quite a while, and he'll be the Scotty next. He has a soul ring, Scotty by the way, so on Morphling. He's got a soul ring. Oh, I just saw that. That's kind of cool. Huh. Interesting. He's not expecting any chakra magics coming his yeah, way. Yeah, <laughs> with a caudal, yeah, yeah, that's kind of funny. Ooh, I, ooh Taiga. I'm able to find the space to get off that dispose. He does have a keen optic, so almost have a toss from Jin Q, and that is a deleted Morphling. He was full agi, it looks like, but again, just the Aegis is Amar. We'll get Retribution. So expires a little bit early for OG, but not the biggest punish. OG is starting to get hemmed in. You see, Ame is not able to sneak out onto these lanes and farm. There is too much kill threat, too much global ability. This Shaker and this Marthy hunting in all the lanes. It's very difficult for LGD to actually get out right now, and it's also hard for them to take a fight until they have just like a little bit more. So they're slowly losing out on gold, and it's not a position you want to be in against this much like stun and scaling late game. It's not a game where Razor's going to be able to do that much, unless he has a bunch of items, which he does not currently. Yeah, I feel like Morphling is really set up for success in this game. Like, Morph versus Alk, you're a Scotty buyer. I, I don't think Alk is ever going to out-trade a Morph. Like, the point of Alk is you have more gold than somebody. And uh, they're about even right now. And then you steal the Razor and just take the Link. It's like a hard counter. Yep, smoke comes out from LGD. Actually positioning themselves. The last time, I remember seeing this, the last time they were down by this much. I mean, 5k, a 6k against an Alchemist, it's probably like more of a 10, 11k. But when Faith Beyond was Razor, when he got that refresher, they turned that game around real fast. As Seb, Man. invisible, blocking the smoke. He gets off the Echo Slam, but he gets bashed up. And he's going to be brought down very swiftly by Faith Beyond. Pops that BKB. Rolling Thunder is coming in from nothing to say. So one for one supports right now as BZM. I'll watch nothing to say, just TP out inside that ult form, so just a support for support. Yeah, I mean, they force all of OG's heroes to the top lane, so all gets a little bit of time. He's going to get to farm these camps and actually put the bottom lane in, so... They use some BKBs for it, but... Or, I mean, they use Razor BKB for it, but it's not the end of the world uh, for LGD, but... You can see that, like, that's not the type of smoke you're making if you're in a comfortable position, you know? It's, I wouldn't say desperation, but it's definitely a very uncomfortable position for them, that they're sort of squirming around trying to find a way out of... Yeah, I feel like that could have been disastrous for LGD if uh, if that went a little bit different. Like uh, Tiny not being caught in the in the aftershock meant that he could get the avalanche off, so Seb couldn't continue uh, his chain stun. Yeah, you can see the gold lead continuing to mount, and that's with an alchemist, like you said, against some matchups that aren't that great unless you have more money than them. And he does not have more money, so things can potentially get pretty scary for LGD soon. Viper having BKB as well, you're running out of targets you can jump, but whenever that starts happening and the enemy gets a four staff, the enemy gets ways to, you know, continue to shrink the amount of heroes you can jump, things start getting really difficult. You need to play off 100 to zeros, and versus a good team who's aware of it, you're just not going to get that many 100 to zeros. There's Yuragi and company taking the outpost in LGD's jungle. And Seb, is he now going for a blink? I believe he does have four staff. Okay, just finished four stuff, I believe, yeah. So, Blink will finally come. He's going Shadow Blade after. I can't wait to see all this mobility. And Seb. All right, what do you think about going four stuff before Blink this game? Obviously, a lot cheaper, but or a lot easier to, to get. Uh, I think it sort of plays into that uh, idea of LGD needing these certain jumps on these cores, this Coddle or whoever, and if they buy items to kite that, then LGD's heroes have massive problems actually doing anything. 
And nothing to say. Has to use his ult just to TP out again. And obviously no way for OG to really do anything about it. Ame, he gets off his BKB just to run away. And if I'm not mistaken, that is the nine second charge. Wait, if you turn back into Morphling with, while channeling Alkstead, he doesn't stun himself. Oh, really? Oh, huh. you know. That's kind of OP. Yeah, real OP. Dude, that's good. Yeah, that's... I mean, how many Alk self stuns have we, have we seen result? It's usually five Alk. Yeah, but, but taking over Alk isn't really that great. You yeah. don't get chemical rage. So. Acid spray is an S tier ability. It is, if they stand in place. Yeah. So you strength morph to get the adaptive strike stun into acid spray, then it's powerful. Yeah. Okay. And Scotty, not that far away from Yuragi, and. Again, when it comes to Scotty carriers, this is a probably a top three here on the entire game, along with the TBs of the world. Amar also has one queued up after the Manta style that naturally. Yep, he, of course. Because you got to get those three uh, three snakes uh, coming in hot. <laughs> See how did he smoking? But there's nobody up here. They are definitely very desperate for a fight right now. They're doing it even without the Alk BKB. Looking for any window they can find, but those well breaks. Yeah, nothing to say. At the very least, able to deny Yuragi a double damage, which would have been pretty scary. 7k lead for OG. I mean, this is where it comes back once again to this. You need a jump on the Coddle or the supports. And if there's this Viper always breaking and there's a four staff and they're playing on hills and in fog, it just is so annoying to jump them. Mm -hmm. And you can see LGD, like, they're just looking for it constantly. They're, like, always trying to be ready, but they're just not getting the opportunity. And OG scanned this out, so they know this could be a, a thing here. A seven. A little bit late on the fissure as Amar has to BKB TP. He's fine. A set might not be too much as nothing stays stuck inside the wall. Gets off the blink dagger. So that is, again, just a support kill, not the biggest deal. And OG read that all the way. Yeah, they're playing for this Roche. I don't know if it spawned. I don't know how to read that chart. But One minute and 14 seconds before spawn. I don't know. When it's golden, that means that's how long. <laughs> we learned that one the hard way. Yeah, we made some big mistakes in the DPC. <laughs> you guys don't see that in uh, when you're playing as a pro player. We do not. Nobody watches. <laughs> Nobody watches. <laughs> <laughs> and Yuragi in the Razor form, not able to find anybody, though. The lead has gone down a bit in favor of LGD, but again, with the Alk, feels like they need to be leading. I'm gonna get some nice creeps and TPs out, so just playing the kind of split push game. Yep, now he has the BKB on Coddle as well, so they, this game, a lot of how the fights go depends on ZinQ and nothing to say, being really ready and crispy with these jumps. Uh, have a toss for the instant Orchid onto the Tiny. Is Seth four staffs to safety? And the Viper Sack's actually going to slow Faith Beyond down enough for Seth to survive. But now they're going to TP out our time. Trying to the Faith Beyond TP and trying the right moment as the Fissure ends up canceling the TP. Double kill for Seb of all heroes. And now Y looks to be next on the list. The fact that Seb survived and then canceled that TP. TP, pretty damn crazy, and now they're gonna scout out the second Roche it of the game. It literally just respawned as that fight ended. That is lucky. Yeah, that's a catastrophe for LGD. Uh, I mean, sure, nothing to say is out farming on the map, but yes, that whole pincering in, time. closing LGD into the map that was going on for the last five minutes is only gonna get worse now, because now there's even more heroes that are invincible, even more heroes standing on hills being annoying. They're gonna go D-Ward your triangle right now, and the places where you can play as LGD are just slowly shrinking and shrinking. You're gonna lose your top tier two now. It's only gonna get harder from here. Now, important question, who gets the Ag Shard? Yeah, that is a great question. It's always Viper. Yeah, Amar, did he actually take it? It was Viper. Yeah. So now they can push extremely fast. I mean, Morphling is one of those heroes that people kind of lose sight of when it comes to pushing, but he's actually very strong. Because he can just go full Agi and right click away. Now with the minus armor and poison attack damage from Lars can be even faster. Jin Q jumps in with the Avatar. But Amar instant BKB. Ame trying to focus down BZM. He'll be successful. So dead Coddle right off the bat in favor of LGD. And Amar looks to be next. And nobody actually dying in this engagement for LGD. Dang, that was super impressive. Ame clicked the Coddle in the air with the stun. Because otherwise the chain doesn't go off. Because Coddle has BKB, so he presses it when he lands, but he doesn't get it off. But he managed to like click him in the air with huh. the stun. Wow. Uh, and LGD, I mean, I feel like this is a team. We saw them come back from what looked to be... It, it looked to be literally the biggest stomp, the biggest shellacking of the entire Major. 
and it was a top L hat. And it was a top hat. It almost an umbrella. And LGD came back from it. It was a reverse top hat, so a 7k gold lead against him. <laughs> you gotta be careful. <laughs> yeah, that reverse top hat will get you. Uh, nice BKB time from Amar, but it's just wow. BZM not able to play Dota in this fight. That was nice. He, he might have, like, shift queued it or something like that. Yeah, it was really impressive. I mean, I think this is a sign of a really good team. Like, that's literally what cost them the rush before is they jump just like a little bit out of position or like maybe they needed to wait a little bit longer, but it doesn't phase them at all. Like, JinQ immediately is still looking at their wards. He's still ready for this jump and they do it again because they know that's how they need to play. Like, they can't just give OG the whole map. They have to be ready on these spots looking for these key jumps and he doesn't get phased at all. He keeps looking for it and it pays off big. Like, they just have to keep finding this stuff. It's a very high skill game for LGD, but it's not out of reach. Still three minutes left on that Aegis. I mean, the fact that they were able to take that fight for PSG kind of cuts into the Aegis timer, which is exactly what you want to do because this second rush is typically the time that you want to hit the high ground. And we're going to see that right now, potentially from Yuragi. Radiant's gone and fortified their structure. That sidekick enabled as well. He's and close to AC on Alchemist, which will help a little. Yeah, he has it. Oh, he has it already. He has AC, yeah, going, building into the Scotty now, so he can actually win the trade with Yuragi. Yuragi bash now, nothing to say. Basically guaranteed to get that with a swashbuckle most of the time, as you can see the building's melting. Tier 3 tower is dead. And OG still with the Aegis for two minutes. Question is, will LGD give up one set of racks or just try to delay this? Tiger's in a really good spot here. He's, he's looking for the jump. He put a ward down, too. They see everything. Just focusing on the barracks, but you can see they relocate poor Yuragi into the enemy lines, but he's able to waveform to safety. There's nothing to say. Already with that ult coming out, Amar has to pop his BKB, standing his ground to try to finish this Rax, and that's exactly what he'll do. And we'll take out eventually to that poison attack, but now that the BKB's down, he's gonna get tossed back into the frame, but Yuragi comes in, deleting here, left, right, and center. But a nice grave coming out from Y on himself, and the Aegis is down. Y able to rebound to safety. Ame, that Spirit Vessel applied, he's not gonna regen too much, despite having the Chemical Rage, he's getting stun-locked. Oh, Set actually he's jumps into more. his death as Morphling dead. Yeah. 70 seconds of no Yuragi. Double kill for Ame. Bash coming out from nothing to say. Attempting to we're continue we're this chase on the BZM. Who just recently popped his BKB. Maybe this oh, one he is this? super fast. Oh, doesn't... Gonna get up. Oh, he hit him. Yep, he hit him in the trees. Oh, but he's gonna TP out there. Oh. He's so lucky that that didn't bash. <laughs> so lucky. And OG. They, they do get the melee racks in that bot lane. But that was not as smooth as they were looking for, that's for sure. I can't give enough kudos to LGD for making that hole. I think a lot of teams, if you mess that fight up, as the thing is LGD, the game is over. You lose the game right there. You're gonna lose two sets of racks or you're gonna lose too many buybacks to come back from that gold lead. But they understand that even though this playing has Aegis, it doesn't matter. They still need to go on this guy and chuck him back into base because you can't start on anyone else. They're positioned too well. You have to go on this guy who's exposed and bait them into the base. And they understand that and they make this happen. And if you mess it up even just a little bit, you just lose the game. Like that jump right there, so clutch from Tiny. Like a, so many little things that if they go slightly differently, you just lose on the spot. So that's the first death there for Yuragi. And I'm surprised that he... I mean, obviously with Ame being that low, I can see why. And I mean, the fact that Y is able to survive through this is crazy. But definitely punished. So one racks down, not the end of the world for PSG LGD. I feel like OG even played that fight very well. Uh, it's just that LGD somehow found the openings. Like, their the OG's chain stuns were, were good. Taiga, would, he tried to save. But uh, LGD, they pressed their buttons. They sure did. Smoke on both sides, and... Jin-Q gonna back up now, as both teams know the general area. He's got a ward. He's gonna ward in Sentry, maybe. Yeah, Biragi, wait for him again, but instant blink from Jin-Q. I thought he even got the solar bind off is kind of insane, but obviously too far away now to pursue as this game is getting a little bit closer for LGD. Really great restraint from both fours there. They saw each other and they both knew that it was kind of a weird, uncertain jump. They didn't try and force it too much. They're not being antsy. They decided to just wait and play for the jump they're more sure of. I think it's very, very clutch from both teams. LGD's done such a good job this game at just like dodging the bad fights and instead just running at the side lanes like 
get, getting behind this like front line on the map of OG trying to restrict them to base. Oh my god. Put his hands out and everything. <laughs> Come to Those me. hands are very fearsome. Uh, but yeah, next Roche, we won't know for another couple minutes. And that's going to be the big one. That's going to be the one that, in many cases... It's going to be the eggs. Well, now that you say that. The patch has come out. They changed it. <laughs> Hot six. 70% chance for the eggs, 30%. Yeah. When you play, do you notice the third Roche? It's like 70-30 refresher shard Radiant over the eggs. I feel like when I get third Roche, it's refresher. When they get it, it's eggs. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's yeah. a good point. Confirmation bias there. Yeah. Yes. Radiance top tower. Have a BZM. Yep, looking towards uh, the Octarine. Ame has Scotty. It, it is closing in on a point Radiance where maybe LGD can take a straight up fight. Oh, Ame already has a Kakak coming off. Trying to focus on Amar, but he's already at half HP. They have to be careful. Hey, pop his Ogen. Gets off the DKB finally, trying to regen through it. He just chops down Taiga, but he's the one that's slow. Finally, the Grave comes out. It's Yoragi. He's oh going to get deleted. 80 seconds of no more fling. And now Amar looks to be next on the list. Double kill for Faith Beyond. No, geez, and that's so four cool. dead from OG with the buyback on Marcy. Dude, that was insane. They see BZM. BZM in the trees. He's gonna get him. Get the toss from Jin Q. He does, along with the swash, as he actually gets off his BKB, but he just right clicked down very casually from nothing to say. So a full team wipe if you count the buyback. That was actually crazy. The fact that they, like, it's this, it's this baiting. They understand that they have the reset. Like, Dyer is so much slow damage. They have this Coddle, this Viper. And if the out presses his ult, like, immediately, then they can kite the ult, and it's hard to fight after. But he runs in, and he baits them to use all this no, crap on No BKB, yeah. Yeah, and then they know they have the Dazzle save behind him. So he presses the ult and purges all the stuff, mm. and then is able to play the fight slower afterward. Like, extremely impressive. Yeah, like, it, some balls right there. It, no, it, like, it, it looks stupid. It looks like a mistake that they're making, but that's exactly what they want it to look like, right. right? They want it to look like, oh, you can kill this guy, but the, the grave is there, and he's so low, and it's 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 very close to being disastrous, but it's like what Quinn is saying. It's what they have to do at this point. Yeah, I mean, they get drawn in just a little bit, and they have so much repositioning and annoying, like, repeating stun. They have this tiny, always waiting to toss you back. They have this Pango who's going to chain stun you when your BKB's out. Like, if you don't win the fight really quickly as OG, things can start to get really hairy if the stuns are still alive on LGD, because they're going to keep repositioning you and stunning you and poking you, and it, it just falls apart over time. And now LGD has the 6k gold lead. It's, I don't think they need to even keep risking plays like that to take fights. Like they can probably just toss somebody back and like the fights just get easier for them from here on out. Yeah, I mean, you can get to, I mean, you can see that they're still, like, so ready. They're so poised. They're not, like, letting their guard down. Like, they have this ward here. They're ready to break a smoke. They know that OG's probably coming, and they just they just break the smoke like this. Yep, Seb, instant blink away. Taiga. <laughs> He's a little braver. <laughs> he puts down the ward just to spot, uh, to spot Jin Q. Obviously, with those spider legs really helping out his cause. Spider legs on Tiny is so insane, actually. It helps you with the, the easiest tossbacks in the history of Dota. Really big arcane range. Yeah, that's a good one. This is a very big deal. Also with Lincoln's now on Pangolier, so he is going to be a massive pain. Sort of playing into this slow fight theme. If LG continues to play these cute kitey fights, like they're gonna have multiple roles now. They have this super blink uh, for like also to just like force out these BKBs so that the fight can last. Refresher on Razor, so Morphling can't even really man fight into all this like crap and the AC and the Refresher and just so much stuff like Morph is at this point where it's he can't just wave in and hit stuff like he's gonna die You saw it last fight. He's fighting a Razor and Razor just killed him. Yeah, and we're approaching the territory I mean, I, I think Ame is going for the shards so that gives him an extra dispel if he's already popped the chemical rage It's gonna be pretty damn valuable against the spear vessel uh, But maybe now we get some axe for his teammates uh, after the fact but we'll see. And LGD smoking up. They're trying to get them on these the three OG side. side. Yuraga able to wait for away, but a beautiful double avalanche, which forces the double BKB from OG. Rolling Thunder on the sideline. Faith Beyond taking the right click from Amar, but they're actually kind of baiting this, it feels like. The buyback onto the tiny. Faith Beyond pops his refresher. That's two eye of the storm. Yuragi Yuragi with this it. Morphling is completely isolated. He's just going to get right click down. 80 seconds of no Yuragi. He buys back, TPing onto the, the outpost. Looks like LGD still want to fight. They are not scared of this buyback whatsoever. Although Faith Beyond Oh, now running out. out of the that comes out of the BZM. The Arcanor is going to come into play here. He's going to have roll again. I don't know if OG can deal with that. 
And so 7k lead for LGD as they know that this is now a 5v4 set without a buyback as Roche is now up. But they have to push out these lanes. This, this bottom racks starting to bite them a bit. The fact that they require Ame services to do that. And now you can see the Roche is scouted from Yuragi. Another wave coming as well. Ame might decide to deal with it. Maybe they prioritize being here immediately. Uh, Shin Q, the fearsome position four with the double Dive damage now. Towers getting beat down. Obviously Huge just morning. denying that for Morphling pretty damn big. And there you go. Another rolling thunder from nothing to say. He catches Amar. Only stuns him once though. Doesn't look like any follow-up will come. So not quite enough space for LGD to go for Roche. Well, I say that. They at least scout it out. Even if they don't kill the Roche off this, they still have this ward that OG's not the warded, and they killed OG's hill ward. So a lot of times in these Roche standoffs, this hill ward will keep getting placed back and forth over and over again. And if you can, like, sometimes you kill a hero, you smoke, and you just kill the ward, and you put your own ward, and it's more valuable than almost anything else. Because this is still standing here. They still see them. Like, LGD is very happy and calm with what's happening. They're not scared at all. They know what's going on. And OG is lacking vision. They're going to be more inclined to overextend it to LGD, and they're waiting for it. Yeah, Ame continue to push out that bot lane as Yuraki, uh, he's not getting any farm right now. He, his services are required to make sure that this Roche is not being taken. No buyback on the Morphling either, so you feel really bad. You've just bought back and you can't farm any creeps. And so if you lose this next fight, you lose the Aegis, you start getting pinned into the base. You can start to have real item progression problems as the Razor continues to get more fat, the Pango gets more fat, Tiny starts to have a Yules and a Ghost Scepter and a Force, like, it starts to get really hard to kill heroes. Well, also because of the vision that LGD has, they have this ward that's constantly scouting out Yuragi and all of OG. It means that Ame can feel comfortable actually hitting creeps because he knows that they're not taking Roshan. He knows that they're not making any moves. So that's another reason that he's just going to get more and more farm. He's almost... He's, he's actually getting to the point where he's going to be double the Morph's net worth. He's getting, he's getting there. there, but OG are in the pit. You can see most of LGD in the area. Not no. the Avalanche with the Swashbuckle, but the Roche is going out relatively fast, and Ame is just waddling his way over there. And they contest Faith Beyond with the Plasma Field, forcing some of OG out. And this Roche is getting extremely low. Here comes the Rolling Thunder. Double stun from nothing to save. Trying to focus on seven. He gets a nice four staff to safety. And Amar off the BKB. Just focusing on Faith Beyond. But that is a refresher orb with the BKB. Roche getting extremely low. Who is going to get it? It looks like it's going LGD's way. As the rest of OG have to hightail out because of the death on Yuragi. But they're going to try to get some kills in the meantime. It's BZM getting chased. With the Orchid. Going to prevent the stun from coming out. And that is a refresher shard. Aegis still pulsating on the ground. As Ame will take it for his for himself. Holy moly! Yuragi got caught by the the dazzle hex. That's that's le legitimately all that was. Uh, he was agi morphing. Gets caught. No Scotty necessary. Nothing. Just just basic damage going through the team fight. He goes down. I mean, honestly, this all goes back down to the fact they don't have a gem and they don't have they didn't deward the spot. Like they're just seen the whole time. So LGD is not in a rush. They're poking, they're fine with this rush getting low because they know they have the jump coming. They're biding their time for Alchemist to get close enough. Yeah, so he's strength morphing here. There's the Agimorph. It was the it was out oh, into Dazzle Hex. Man, yeah, that's rough. That is very unfortunate. So now LGD turning this game completely around. We've seen it before. And again, remember. Game number one was only their second loss of the entire freaking tournament, which is absurd. So being pushed to the limit here by OG, but they might have run out of steam now. Yeah, this team's clutch factor is like completely unparalleled. I don't think any other team is even close. Um, some of these jumps that Zinku got the in the triangle, right? If they got the Aegis, being like super ready there and getting these two kills, like I think they'd probably just get stomped if they didn't get that from there on out. Like there's the way they play this high ground defense, like so many windows that if you lose one more hero, they miss one spell, like they'll just lose the game on the spot. Oh, oh Agnes Scepter, quick! It's oh. gotta be nothing to say, right? Could give it something about that bottom tower. Does that know? No. Okay. Oh, he hasn't received it yet. Oh, he gave it to Razor. Oh, he gave it to Razor? Okay, oh, that's so that's some really building good. damage. Very yeah. nice. Dude, two refreshers on Razor. He's gonna re have three BKBs, <laughs> three Hexes, yeah. three Eye of the Storms. He's Excuse me? cheese just as a backup there. Yeah. No problem. He's also a Chad and took the Storm Interval Strike. Almost everybody these days have been taking the speed. Um, but it's Yeah, last time games. we cast him, he did this as well, actually. Yeah. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. I like... I like the read, honestly. Like, this Morphling keeps running into you, and you just need this. Oh, Q. He might be food for OG, left all alone. And Mega dead. 
Uh, but yeah, like I was saying earlier, the, the game that we cast that was the reverse top hat, exact scenario, well, it wasn't exact scenario, it didn't have an alchemist, I don't think, but Faith Beyond's surprise refresh or turn the game, ends up going that town, ends up getting the Ags eventually, and that was the biggest comeback of the tournament, and the fact that this is the upper bracket of the playoffs might make this potentially the biggest comeback um, for LGD in quite a while. Yeah, they're in pole position to take this game. Cuddle at this point in the game is strong for sure, but the enemy is very tanky. And this Lotus Orb item, these four staffs, like, they're a real problem for this hero as the game progresses because you don't have that, like, 100 to 0 damage that a core wants at this point. You have, like, half HP. Like, you can do it, take a core to half HP, but that's that's not enough. There's a grave, there's reset potential. Like, it's it starts getting really annoying. You look at OG's heroes, and they have really big damage issues. Yeah, and it, do it doesn't feel like Yoragi can go in and man fight where, like, maybe he could be the damage, but he's dying. He's dying to the hexes, he's dying to the to the, the Alk with the Eye of Scotty healing reduction. Like, Yoragi can't man up and do damage. So the question is, where does it come from? And, uh, well, it looks like Amara's building a Daedalus, so okay. that'll be something. A butterfly, butterfly first, Daedalus. apparently. Yeah, so he's going full carry build. Yeah, the real question is, is Ame building more Aghanim Scepters? He has 7k. I don't even know what Dazzles does anymore, if I'm being honest. Just the, it has to do with the cool, uh, free item usage or whatever. I think production just opened up the like console that. to try to see what <laughs> Dazzles Ultimate does. <laughs> what is that? I'm sure that's not Google. What is Dazzles? That's what it looks like. LGD want to use this, uh, this Aegis in any capacity. Does that surprise you at all? There's only a minute left. Or maybe they're going now. It sort of is, to be honest. I think they maybe were going to, and then Zinku got caught, and it sort of slowed things down for them. Mm. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but I do feel like they, something could have happened more in this time frame. Because OG is sad right now, for sure, but they're not, like, weeping. Oh, you're right. <laughs> I like that. He's there? Not yet, at least. Uh, Will they be weeping? The smoke not broken yet. The Avatar Jin Q. They destroy those illusions. And now the self-stun. Actually, Faith Beyond's BKB obviously could refresh it, but feel kind of bad, especially that, since there's only 30 seconds left on the Aegis here. Spicy game to be sure. This bottom lane is not the end of the world, but it is annoying. Um, you can see people pinging it. LG's probably looking at it, oh, yeah. it back up. Aegis is wearing out. That's the axe, Quinn. He hasn't queued up. Let's go. Click on Pango. What talents does he have? Is he 27 yet? He's, oh, close, he's close. 27. Roll, okay. Rolling Thunder. We get a 27. Well, 15 talents. Oh, it's 20, 20, 20, 20, 28. Oh, you 27 28. is useless. Yeah. 1.5 mana regen. Juicy. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be juicy. He'll never have to go to base. I mean, if he. I mean, again, that 20 talent or that 15 talent is crazy, crazy. If you have Ags, it is a lot of deeps. But we'll see. So he is building eyes. I was wondering if he was just gonna try to either get a moon shard or even replace the radiance well, he gave it to at Dazzle. this point. Oh, all right, all right somebody read this for me. Okay, so it refreshes somebody's abil or, uh, their items. Okay, so more BKBs for Faith Beyond. Yeah, I presume I presume it doesn't refresh refresher. No, no. I don't Definitely. think so. Definitely not. That would be stupid. That would be broken. Definitely not. Oh. This would be every game. It also reduces. Dazzle's item cooldowns as well, so he'll have Glimmer Cape. Got like 15 billion grit. So that's like his old one. Yeah, so he has he has a two second downtime on Glimmer Cape. That's actually insane. Yeah, it's pretty nutty. Because having a gem in your inventory at this point is, is a big pain. Like, everybody is six slotted. Kind of. Oh. Sad. Four staff. And buybacks. You can see Yuragi, he's 800 gold away from his. Taiga trying to find Faith Beyond, but the double BKB comes out from each. And he's just gonna get static, static linked along with Faith Beyond's refresher, so that's gonna be a dead Marcy to say the least. Nothing to say, not able to find anybody though with the Rolling Thunder. So a lot expended from LGD just for a Marcy kill. They do get the tier two though. Yeah, I think. We'll see if they hit the high ground. I do think it's possible for them to. They have the Grave and lots of Force Staffs to reset, but it looks like they're off the yeah, I think they need to wait for another Aghanim Scepter there, Quinn. <laughs> Maybe uh, so. Oh, <laughs> let's go for the Alk Ags next. Oh, yeah, he does get that damage buff. That yeah. is nice. What? Uh, I mean, when do you get rid of the Radiance? Okay, he's getting Boots of Travel to replace uh, his phase. I feel like Radiance can be upgraded to some damage item. Yeah, because he's got the Cleave, right? Like Abyssal Blade or something? Maybe. Abyssal, Abyssal probably, that's probably the choice. I mean, that's just, it's gonna make it even harder for Yaragi to trade with him. But the Ags, 
Nothing to say is only one level away from the dream. I, honestly, I, I, I genuinely do think Ags is more value than replacing a Radiance with anything, because it's, it's not like he needs an Abyssal to kill any of these heroes. Uh, you, may, you may as well just like start putting net worth on other heroes. Because mm -hmm. you're already six slotted on Alk. Like selling an item to buy another one is, is not m much of an upgrade. Big news though, in two minutes they can buy a tome for nothing to say to get a little bit closer to that level 28. Illusion. Lamar. That Manta. Oh, they're so close to him. They just demolish them. So 18k lead for LGD, but this game still feels very close. Really big for strain from LGD there, not trying to kill that war, just saying like, okay, you have a war, that's fine, you can keep it. We're not gonna, we're not gonna fight into your vision. We're gonna come back up here. We're gonna make you come back. Um, they understand how dominant a position they are in terms of team fighting, so they don't want to sacrifice that in some silly way by running into Dyer's vision and getting like mega fissure stunned and coddle slowed over and over again. Because realistically, that's the way OG wants to fight. They they want you to come into us. We've been going into you all game and you've been mm -hmm. winning. You know, how about you come into us now? And LG's not giving them that. Yeah, and then they force they just force them back to base. And he's gonna get orchided here. Ame does, and sheeped just to delay. Has the boots of travel too now. They're actually stuck inside the base. A nice fissure coming out, but being tossed back out. No, Seb actually stays on the same side. Pops that BKB and OG's gonna reset, but their buildings are going down pretty damn fast. Nothing to say, trying to create some space, Seb. BKB does dissipate, another nice fissure. Nothing to say, forced to use his swashbuckle. But the real story is that Yoragi might get caught out here. Now the fissure turning against OG to some degree. Face Beyond getting He's a static attack. link and the refresher. He is just detonating this morph link. That is a dead Yoragi, but he buys that instantly. Set, Echo comes off, but he dies shortly after. Now the focus looks to be on Face Beyond, but he's the one doing so much damage. The Basher connects onto Yoragi, gets off the BKB, Amar. He can focus on Face Beyond in the meantime. It's a double kill for Ame as he continually hits Rampage here. The nice double avalanche coming out as well. The cheese activated for Face Beyond. This man is unkillable. Double buyback for OG. Link from back to the same. Sets up all of these additional kills from LGD. Die back on Yuragi. Ultra kill for Ame. And LGD looking very nice to take this potentially in the game number three. That's the buyback from Ame though. Jin Q gets the toss out. Amar stuck in a very awful spot. He gets sheep. Concoction's coming for him as well. And that is a dieback for him. No buys. Two sets of racks and they can go for this actual win here as the GG's come out early here. 24k net worth lead for LGD in the end. And a terrific comeback. The discipline from LGD. It rivals nobody, I feel like.